was a poem I wrote for, for tonight. Um, it was inspired by a program um, from Hindsight on Radio National, which spoke about um, the animals which, uh, who died at, in the Warsaw Zoo um, as part of World War II. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The leopard and the lion caught in friendly fire. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The leopard and the lion caught in friendly fire. Bombs rain down on the chimpanzee's enclosure. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The leopard and the lion caught in friendly fire. Bombs rain down on the chimpanzee's enclosure. Kasha, the elephant, bellows for Hannibal. The hyenas scavenge the sky's shrapnel and chew at their flaming paws. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The leopard and the lion caught in friendly fire. Bombs rain down on the chimpanzee's enclosure. Kasha, the elephant, bellows for Hannibal. The hyenas scavenge the sky's shrapnel and chew at their flaming paws. Otters watch quietly from their steaming pool. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The leopard and the lion caught in friendly fire. Bombs rain down on the chimpanzee's enclosure. Kasha, the elephant, bellows for Hannibal. The hyenas scavenge the sky's shrapnel and chew at their flaming paws. Otters watch quietly from their steaming pond. Bison are stamping and spitting, twisting in circles of molten ire. Dingoes, shy and distraught, retreat to the pheasant house, which is full of feathers burning. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The leopard and the lion caught in friendly fire. Bombs rain down on the chimpanzee's enclosure. Kasha, the elephant, bellows for Hannibal. The hyenas scavenge the sky's shrapnel and chew at their flaming paws. Otters watch quietly from their steaming pond. Bison are stamping and spitting, twisting in circles of molten ire. Dingoes, shy and distraught, retreat to the pheasant house, which is full of feathers burning. Reflected in the river, the horns of the antelopes are candelabras of incandescent fire. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo are burning. The animals in the Warsaw Zoo, the animals. Thank you. This, this is the text that's up on the wall there, so it's a section of it. Dub, dove, dark dove in search of a place to land. Its wearying wings pause. The offshore br wind brushes through them. Come. Come this way, before your peering eyes can see its blossomed fingers reaching out over the sea, before the orchards of the uplands have lifted their perfume into the sparkling, reflective, sea-swept clouds as a gift for the eye. You sense the island's nearness with the tips of your flight feathers, swayed into its unhesitating welcome, and let let your body draw nearer, nearer, nearer. The essence of its being. Dark dove with no place to call home. Dark spark that burns in your chest. And you, further, farther, furtherest. Out beyond the possibility of discovery. Beyond the unfettered phrases. Lifting yourself higher up there. Somehow, somewhere before and beyond you, teaching in its uncertainty a clarity beyond recall, black speck lifting up, up, into the tailing cloud coming out to greet, dark passage across a hopeless and forlorn choice where only waiting purposes your striving. This is a poem called A Cataract of Water. 
Water is an animal running through pipes with the sound of life in its ears. It is an animal slipping over itself, moving through sand, skin, stomachs, animals, rocks, wood, moving through fish. Water is an animal. It is alive, surviving in exactly the same quantities since it all began. Water is eternal, can neither be destroyed nor does it reproduce, moving vast distances but remaining entirely still. Water makes music speaks and has alphabet. The sound of all the sounds water has ever made is repeated daily. Water speaks as millions speak as one. Water bears witness to everything it contains and is contained by. To entire history, it makes the same sound as the cave people heard, that Kerouac wrote in Bixby Canyon, that serenades the underwater connection between New Zealand and England. Water is an animal that gentle work is percussions, drums and drummer shares itself with everything except itself, contributes, educates the beach, divides the land with live movement. Water is alive and naked, drips from the hairs beneath the potter's arms, waits quietly in the concrete beneath every brick on earth. Water is an animal travelling from Lake Eyre, the cataracts of the Nile, to 70% of the billions of bodies to my bladder. Each a lonely universe surrounding a thirsty eye. strange poem in the sense um, I try to pl take the place of a lioness and a lion because there was a period of time when it was very hard to either get a job or get the dole or prove yourself worthy. Animal love, sanguine Sasha stills, senses the jungle rumble, listens for Leonard, gaunt frame grim, countenance bare, just there, she yawns, gastric mist sighs out where it is violet, nocturnals prowl, rhesus fools chatter on low branches, crazy, distracted, getting what they can, gibbons, sweat, stare from moonlit limbs, subterraneans, scurry in underworlds, jungle creatures, fearful of strange conditions, small, Green snake stills, leaves gloss. Oh! Cave from deep back rings, hard, high, monotone, on trail, dissatisfied, hungry, mother! Heart thickens. Main prickles, aware mate's distant call, is stiff, is alert, Leonard, about for prey, for danger, Sasha! Cave from deep back rings, cubs, one, two, and three, freak her heart, reek up. Falcons every ear. She sniffs the earth, air, scent cold, scent bare. Somewhere, mate is about ranging meat. Low income animals roll, blaging bright. Chew dune grass in silver forest streets. Animal in me, come on, Sula. Sula, animal in nice guy, Sula, beast, Sula, ripple through black forest, silent savage river, and silent breeze, savage hunter, 
animal anger in me, anger. Deep in blue light, heart flames, eyes burn, silent air motion, slow muscle rhythm, ripple through black bush, savage river, spring, bite, breaker, downer, gotta, beauty, crusher, killer, such a Leonard, Sasha! Out across a fearful city, Lioness responds to her mate, licks down her pelt, turns under brittle leafy heights, trots at speed, cubs, one, two, and three, ache her heart, Leonard. Nostril sweet with blood, trots at speed, prey gripped in mouth. Sasha, nostril stung with nust, anxious for meat to beat the drought. Emaciated animals, fearful of strange conditions, small green snakes stills, leaves gloss. I have lots of dogs in my poems. My heart is a puppy and you are a dog. Christmas got smashed on New Year's grog. You are out of the house, house garden. There is nothing to discuss. I will give you away because I am heartless. He who listens with soft ears will have this. Here is mine, I said, tissue and twine. It was the unwanted gift. He turned his words into mist and put my heart on the floor. He would look at it later. Sit. I should not have been so chivalrous. Here is my heart and me like a cloak on a puddle to get there and say so you didn't want it. There goes that great stumbling track. Shame trips you up like a rock. I am the wrapping paper next to the chair. The puppy's gone. And that dog doesn't like me anymore. Wombat's wooing. He lumbers after her in a great circle. They hold firm like buttresses. Arched night to hold up vaulting desire. She pauses. He pauses. Crescent handle reels them in, shouldering. A far range and roundabout ritual, eyes side of her head she centres, no neck between earth and sky found and found, blocking in hill and cave and beast and love. This is <clears throat> There's another wombat. Forgive his affair. Her new kitchen gleams like an apology. New windows, she can see down to the creek. They've cleared the blackberries. Now wombats can't rid themselves of ticks and die. She recalls big claws unravelling wool, his golden head seeking her armpit. Then he trundles into the afterglow of New Year's Eve to be de-ticked. She pushes his broad head across her floor in their old game when she wakes. Great runes through parquet. This is called The Perfect Australian. Two kookaburras, beige and brown, sharp and round, with a flash of very pale blue, sit brother and sister on the muscled arm of a white and blue gum tree. One has a rat 
and he's banging its head on the very hard wood of a late summer's afternoon. Thwack goes the rat, then down the hole of Cookie's throat as his sister looks regally on. She rattles the tree with an enormous laugh which frightens more rats from the long dry grass. She drops like a stone on the back of a rat and runs it through with a single thrust of her guided missile beak. The kookaburra, a calm and confident bird, is mostly silent. She is prone to acting the goat when drinking too many rats. The perfect Australian. Working from home. Today, from upstairs window, I see two stairs, watch two sheep, slaughtered on the back of Old Fields' home kill truck, parked on neighbour's driveway, two paddocks away. We, son and I, knew those sheep as we do the stairs, having grazed our paddocks, also when we were fine for freezer food. Sheep were sheep, easy going when they grazed our side. They got rid of the dock that grew here from having horses graze. As for the stairs, the tan of the two is a beefy bugger. More than once he is forced over fence and chewed out my late wife's last native plantings. Our son Isaac, the almost vegetarian, wants sausages from him. Steers stand at Taranaki Gate now that the Honkel truck is gone, making mournful noise. The grass is much greener outside. Also outside my window, full bloom magnolia tree swings red against winter's western sky. Kia ora. But tonight, I'm going to call this piece a uh, fairy tale triptych. <clears throat> The duck, the gannet and the coot came across a cow that was grazing near a fence. Why are your udders so full? asked the duck. Your calf must be starving. Fences define our lives just as land defines yours. Why are you so far away from water? asked the cow. We have come to learn about the world away from water. But you cannot escape it. I get my water from a pump. But why are your udders so full? I get my water from a pump. <laughs> Beware of cows. That was the lesson they learned that day. The duck, the gannet and the coot came unto a chicken. You have so many eggs, said the duck. You must be worn out from having sex all the time. <laughs> Beware of the fox that is disguised as a duck, said the chicken. Then it gave them three magic pellets. That evening, the duck stuck the pellets into its ear. By morning, the pellets had sprouted into another leg. And that is how the one-legged duck became a three-legged duck with only two legs. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a one-eyed chicken. It was born with only one eye because Satan stole the other while it was still in its father's womb. When the chicken grew up, it set forth to find the stolen eye. But hell is a hard place to find when you're not dead. The chicken walked into a fire and got cooked. Uh, yeah. Leopard, you can't imagine the splendor, the rippling walk, the stalking. Under me the ground at 90 miles an hour. The grass is a rush, the dirt a blur. You'll evade, you'll dodge and faint. Play out those 
final seconds, still hopeful of escape. Don't be. I can already taste you and am slavering, impatient for your open throat, your pulse on my tongue, your sweet blood suddenly along my jaw. Saving 100 chickens. We argue about whether saving 100 chickens, their feathers to be patted by a sentimental lesbian, will help to save their million brothers and sisters on the conveyor belt line. This was after eating two pink lamb cutlets and maybe drinking too much red wine. She said it was a significant gesture. I wondered in the shower this morning about people who choke up when the cats and dogs die. Am I just a hard, heartless person? We keep going to dinner parties with vegetarians. As a farm boy, I killed rabbits. I didn't exactly like it, but I didn't m mind that much either. The best part of my family was meals. At that time, chicken was Sunday roast best. I'm too bought poor to buy free range food. And I'm greedy, which you are too, in your own way. I remember Trixie, our Australian terrier and Trigger, our sheepdog, indeterminate breed, and I loved them. But when it was time for them to die, they died. We've got a lesbian friend who keeps her cats in a cage in the backyard so they won't get hurt. As a country kid, I was close to cemeteries, full of persons I knew the names of. This is like a little uh, sound poem, and it's called Male Stutter, okay? Male Stutter. Commitment. 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 Commitment.